Good day everyone. This is the Sunday School Hour of Borlinade Baptist Church and this week we'll be dealing with lesson number eight entitled Pursuing a Pure and Godly Life. Our key texts are found in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 18. Here's the verse. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another verse, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. The Bible says, Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with iniquity, or what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what portion hath a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement hath a temple of God with idols? For we are a temple of the living God, even as God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Our lesson goals for today is that at the conclusion of this lesson, you should, number one, realize God's command to be separated from the world. Determine, number two, determine to remain pure from sexual sin. Number three, desire to think only on things which are honoring to the Lord. Number four, understand that the enemy is real and we must guard ourselves against his attacks. Number five, be aware of the doors Satan uses to corrupt our minds. So these are our lesson goals. As part of introduction, Traveling through this life, men face a constant pull from the world with all of its glitter and glamour, and our flesh finds all that surrounds us so appealing. While this is not new, men have always faced worldly attractions. It has never been so overwhelming as in this time. With today's technology, we find every imaginable toy and temptation at our fingertips calling us to be drawn to the world. We have an enemy, our adversary, who will continually attempt to draw us away into the world. This enemy is Satan. We are warned of him and we are to stand against him bearing God's armor. We live in a hedonistic, humanistic, and materialistic society which tells us to indulge, enjoy, and fulfill those fleshly appetites and to live for personal pleasures. God clearly spells out that a godly man is to live separated from the world. Biblical separation from the world is being as close to the Lord as you can and staying as far away from the world as possible. Here are reference verses. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Matthew 22, verse 37. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. So how do we actively protect our lives to live in a way that is pleasing to the Lord? We must understand how Satan works and stand guard against his advances. Here are the verses. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, the Bible says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. As part of introduction, here are some reference verses. James chapter 4, verse number 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Another verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. The Word of God says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Here's an illustration of the armor of God. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and feet of peace. We must wear all of this armor of God to protect us. This is both for offense and defense. Item number one on how Satan works. First, Satan's desire. Satan wants your mind. He wants to capture, to control, and to corrupt your mind. The devil knows he can disgrace the testimony of a sincere Christian if he can capture the control center, which is his mind. If he can get you to think wrong, he can subtly lead you to do wrong. The enemy is aware that God destroyed an entire civilization because of evil imagination. Here's a reference verse, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. Verse 5 says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he, might, that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Here's the principle of the Bible. Reap what you sow. Sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. Item number one, Satan's desire. We must be alert. So our enemies desire to devour us, therefore resist him. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5.8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, seeking whom he may devour. Not only of Satan's um, desire, item number two, Satan's devices. Satan is a well-laid strategy. It is a two-pronged attack, and it is formidable, meaning strong and powerful, therefore difficult to deal with, and it's also intimidating. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Under this letter A, he blinds the minds of the unsaved. Again, he blinds the minds of the unsaved. Spiritually blinded minds do not see or understand spiritual truth. Whether it is someone who claims to be an agnostic or a person who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God, or simply one who rejects the gospel, we need to share the gospel and pray for those who are spiritually blind. Here are the verses and we will read this later. 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4 and John chapter 3, verse 3. He blinds the minds of the unsaved. The Bible frequently used the analogy of being blind to being spiritually lost. This did not mean that the blind themselves were spiritually lost, but that they were unable to see as someone who is spiritually lost is unable to see the truth. Jesus frequently used the blind to demonstrate that he came to heal blindness, both of the eyes and of the heart. He blinds the minds of the unsaved. Here are the verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3-4 to But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shineth, should shine unto them. It does not matter what church you belong to. If you are not born again, you are not saved. In John chapter 3, verse 3, 
except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Letter A, not only that he blinds the minds of the unsaved, and letter B, under Satan's devices, he corrupts the minds of the saved. Do not think that salvation is an automatic immunity from satanic attack of your mind. Saints across the world are filled with anxieties, fears, doubts, impure thoughts, cares, worries, false doctrines, and bitterness. He corrupts the minds of the saved. If a person is saved but his self is controlling him, what happens is he is the one controlling his life. It is a self-directed life. He has legalistic attitude, impure thoughts, he has jealousy, guilt, worry, discouragement, critical spirit, frustration, aimlessness, fear, ignorance of spiritual heritage, unbelief, disobedience, loss of love for God and others, poor prayer life, and no desire for Bible study. Somebody said that the people who live in fear of disease are the people who get it. Anxiety quickly demoralizes the whole body and lays it open to the entrance of disease, while impure thoughts even if not physically indulged, will soon shatter the nervous system. As a continuation, he corrupts the minds of the saved. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted. They claim to know God but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. This is under Titus chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. The Bible says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He corrupts the minds of the saved. Beware of Satan's devices. He is attempting to corrupt your mind if you are a child of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. The Word of God says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Item number three, Satan's doors. How is Satan able to corrupt our minds? The security is not tight enough. He comes through unguarded and un unlocked doors. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, also, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Here is an illustration about Satan's door. This is the story of the Great Wall of China. Don't you know that this was built about 2,000 years ago? And this is a very formidable structure. That's why it's called the Great Wall of China. It's about 21,000 kilometers long. It's so high that no one can just jump over it and it's so thick that no one can just pass through it. This is the Great Wall of China. But what happens? The enemy were able to enter in because the guards guarding the Great Wall of China were given bribes by their enemy knowing that their situation that they needed money just a simple bribe in giving them the guards allow their enemy to come in. So the purpose of the Great Wall was defeated. And this is also what happens to Christians when we allow the doors for which Satan can corrupt a believer's mind left open. Here are four doors through which Satan can corrupt the mind of the believers. Letter A, unconfessed sin. Unconfessed and harbored sin in anyone's life is the devil's open door. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26-27, Be angry and sin not. 
Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Do not allow the day to end with unconfessed sin in your life. If you do so, you give Satan an open door. That sin lies there, and like a cancer, it begins to grow and spread. It affects your attitude with anger, bitterness, wrath, and malice. It influences you to wrong actions and wrong lifestyle. The answer for this is repentance, a change of mind regarding your sin. Sin must be uprooted and removed. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Unconfessed sin, letter B, undisciplined thoughts. In the lives of many Christian men, this door is left wide open. We need to guard our minds and keep them from wandering. The answer here is resistance. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Undisciplined thoughts. Keep your mind, guard it, control it. If you become passive in your thoughts, a wrong thought will be planted in your mind. Having wrong friends, unwise counsel, or worldly amusement can lead to passivity. TV, videos, games, the internet, rock music, and even commercials can bring wrong thoughts into our mind. Undisciplined thoughts. Say no to sin, whether it be through TV, music, movies, magazines, books, internet, or the computer. You must choose to resist. Resist the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan has no right or authority over your mind and body. They belong to Christ. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Here's another verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Satan's doors. Letter C. Uncontrolled appetites. Nowadays, there are free use of drugs, alcohol, pornography, and even food. In many men's lives, there is tragic abuse of one or more of these areas, leaving wide open the door of this, to destruction of both the mind and the body. The answer is renewal. If your mind is damaged by uncontrolled appetites, whether it be through pornography, drugs, liquor, or other sin, it must be renewed and rebuilt by God's power. Uncontrolled appetites. Dr. Marvin Block, I'm a chairman, said, Ours is a drug-oriented society. Alcohol has become a socially acceptable habit. It is rarely thought of a drug, but it is a scientific fact that it is a drug. Kita di taganahan tawagon nga drug addict, but kung kita alcoholic, daw samar sad kita nga gitawag nga drug addict. Uncontrolled appetites. The process of renewal takes time, takes prayer, patience, spiritual training, and God's word. Just like a caterpillar transforming itself to a butterfly. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another one, letter D, is uncommitted cares. Our society is complex and filled with stress and pressure from every side, whether work, family, and finances. It is easy to become despondent, discouraged, and defeated when we allow ourselves to dwell on negative situations or problems. The answer here is remembrance. God says that we are to cast our care upon Him. He does not intend for you to carry these burdens and dwell under the weight of life's pressure. Sa pagkatinood lang, daghan mga Kristuhanon nga ang kunon o unsay burden sa ilang kinabuhi. Many people fail on this. 
But the answer is that we should give it to God. Cast our care upon Him. If you look enough, you will find plenty which to get de depressed. And millions of men live in a world of depression. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Here's another verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. We should think right. Uncommitted cares. God designed the mind to be able to think on only one thing at a time. So if you keep your mind on the right things, you would not have problems thinking about the wrong things. Start each day on reading the Bible and choose to think on what you read throughout the day. As a conclusion, your faithful and consistent walk with the Lord will strengthen and encourage others. However, when you backslide and get into the world, your life will have the opposite effect on others, especially your family and friends. These four doors of opportunity to draw you into the worldly and wicked activities which will defeat you and ruin your testimony, shut them tightly. Like the great oath of China, kinahala na magwarja, kinahalan dili mo accept og enemy, dili mo accept og bribe. Shut them tightly. Sirad igud. And here's the summary. Lesson number eight, pursuing a pure and godly life. Item number one, Satan's desire. Satan wants your mind. He wants to capture, to control, and to corrupt your mind. Item number two, Satan's devices. Letter A, he blinds the minds of the unsaved. Bisag unsa paninga professional, kung dili siya luwas. He is blinded because Satan blinds the minds of the unsaved. Not only that, he corrupts the minds of the saved. Iyag yung giatake both the unsaved and the saved. And number three, item three, Satan's doors. Letter A, unconfessed sin. The answer is repentance. Letter B, undisciplined thoughts. The answer is resistance. Letter C, uncontrolled appetites. The answer is renewal. Letter D, uncommitted cares. The answer is remembrance. Hope and pray that by God's grace, we can pursue a pure and godly life. To God be the glory that ends the Sunday school today. Thank you.